Hi, I'm Dave Barney. I'm the product manager for our TV attribution product. Today we're going to talk about the model explorer and how to interpret the TV driven signal. Basically when we're looking at this report we're looking for one of three things. Either the TV ad drove a meaningful signal and our model is able to accurately capture that signal or the TV campaign drove a signal, but we didn't do a really good job of fitting the model to it. Or the third one is where there wasn't really a TV driven signal. And we'll take a look at all three of these. So let's dive into the product and take a look. Here we are in the model explorer. This is under the TV tab under modeling. And I'm looking at the model explorer report right now. And what I see here is the way that the, the basic overview of how well the model fit. In this case I'm looking at 2600 spots and I have a 20 minute time segment around each of those spots. So I have 10 minutes leading up to the spot. This vertical bar represents the moment that a TV ad airs and then I have the 10 minutes following the spot. And this chart represents the average traffic for all 2600 spots combined together. So what I see here is a pretty steady baseline leading up to the spot and then a spike in traffic with a slow decay over the next 10 minutes. The blue is what the model is attributing to the TV ad, and the gray is what the model is saying is the baseline. So in this example, I see that there's two things. One, there's a really meaningful TV-driven signal, and two, the model did an almost perfect job in capturing that signal. This is the ideal case. This is what you hope to see. And if you see this, you can be very confident in the results. You can be very confident that TV is driving a meaningful digital signal and that we're doing a really good job of capturing that signal. Now, while I'm still in this report, I just want to show you a couple other things. This is showing an aggregate. I can drill down and look at this at each individual creative level, the network, day part, TV program, and so forth. Or, if I, or, or different geographies or whatever. I'm also looking at the Model Explorer shows me website traffic, but if I want to look at search traffic, there's a Model Explorer for search, and that's what I'm seeing here. Basically the same thing. The only difference between these two reports is that in the search one, there's no y-axis, because we, we need to obfuscate the total search volume, but you still get the same shape. You can still get the same insights in interpreting how strong a signal is, and how well the model fits. Okay, so that's the first case. That's the ideal case. The second case is when there really isn't a good TV signal. And that's what you see here. The, the moment that the TV ad airs, there is a slight, very small bump, and the model does seem to do a pretty good job of capturing it, but it doesn't appear to be meaningful. Now this is really important to understand, and also really important to have confidence in. This is simply the aggregation of all of the traffic surrounding this TV ad, and there, there is no meaningful signal. This can be a meaningful insight for the advertiser. We had an example of an advertiser a couple years ago that intended to drive a strong website signal, but this is basically what they were seeing. And when we looked at their creatives, we saw that they were highlighting a phone number, but nowhere in the ad did they highlight their URL. They redid their TV campaign, they redid the creatives where they had the URL present throughout the duration of the ad, and then when we came back and measured again, we saw a signal that looked more like what I was showing you in the first tab. And so this can be really meaningful, but it probably means that there's not a lot of value in the rest of the reports, because all of those are going to be based off of a really small signal. Okay, the other thing to notice here is that the overall trend of the traffic is declining. When you see that, that probably just means that most of the spots for this advertiser aired in the evening when there's already a, a decline in website traffic. Okay, so that's the, that's the second case where there's no signal. The third case is where there's a signal, but the model may not be doing a perfect job in capturing that signal. That's what we see here in this example. We see that after the TV ad airs, there's a clear uh, spike in activity, and the model does a good job of capturing most of it, but the fact that the baseline raises up a little bit after the first minute and then comes back down shows that it wasn't a perfect model fit. 
This is an example of under-attributing. Now, th in this particular case, it's not a significant under-attribution. I would still have confidence in the results, but it's something to be aware of. If this were, if the, if the baseline jumped a lot higher, then I would be very concerned about the results because we're not doing a good job of capturing it. <clears throat> now, fortunately, these examples don't happen very often anymore. We've improved the model significantly over the last year, and you won't see over or under attribution very often. But it's important to take a look at the model explorer and get a clear idea of how well the model fit is. So that about wraps up the demo. And so basically, I just want to summarize. When you look at the model explorer, you're looking for three, one of three things. A really good TV signal that the model did a good job of fitting. That's the ideal case. The second one is there wasn't really much of a signal. And the third one is TV was driving a signal but the model may have done, may have over or under attributed. And in that case, you have to be a little bit careful with some of the results. And it's important that you take a look at this report up front before you dive into the insight so you know how much confidence to put into the results.